Hello, this is Michelle with Artful Possibilities. We're going to be painting a plant pot with mums. I'm going to add a heart to the plant pot so it will be um, kind of suitable for Valentine's Day. So I'm going to be using several brushes for this project. A one inch flat, half inch flat, and this one is more like a three eighths and a number six round. I think that will get us through everything that we want. Um, I have some larger round brushes also um, hanging around and I might grab one. If I do in the project I will let you know and we'll add it to it. I'm going to be using Liquitex Basics Acrylics with one exception. My red is, um, is actually a crimson and it's Artist Loft. So my colors are the red crimson which is Artist Loft color this is Cadmium Red Light Hue, Hooker's Green Hue Permanent, Light Olive Green, Mars Black, Burnt Umber, and Titanium White. I also got some Cadmium Yellow Light Hue out, but I'm not sure if I'm going to use it yet or not. So what you might want to do is take out a ruler and measure. This is a 10 by 10 inch canvas. Okay, I took out a ruler and I measured um, the center, which would be five inches, and I marked it with a little pencil line. And then I made some lines. Um, the bottom, the bottom span here of the plant pot is about two and a half inches. So I put a mark there and a mark here. And then, where did my, here's my pencil. And then, so it's a mark and a mark, and then I'm going to make an angle, which is about three and a quarter inches up on each side. And it is going to be four and a half inches from one side to the other. So that's how wide you're going to make the top. So if you make two dots at the bottom, two dots at the top, and then draw your lines in between, you'll have the basic bottom to your plant pot. I'm going to turn it um, somewhat upside down. I want to make sort of a curved rim on this plant pot. Okay, so that's pretty good. Now I do it by resting the ball of my hand Okay, and then I just move the pencil, I twist, I pivot my hand without actually moving my fingers. So I'm going to put it here and I'm just going to pivot my hand. You'll see I'm not moving the pencil, just pivoting my hand. And then I can come in and make a side like that. So this got a little bit long. So I think that will work just fine. The other thing you can do is draw a plant pot on a piece of paper and then uh, cut it out. If you can, you can make half of it, then fold your paper in half and cut it out, and then it would be symmetrical. All right. Now I think this came up a little bit, so I'm just going to make a little adjustment, and we can do that with our paint as well. So the first thing that we're going to do is paint the background on this design. So I'm going to take my large flat brush. I'm going to rinse it in the water touch it on my paper towel. Okay. I'm also going to be using a wet paper towel for this project. And I'm going to start with some titanium white and I'm going to start brushing it on my canvas. And then I'm going to grab, I dipped in Mars Black by mistake, so I want to rinse that. I really wanted to grab some burnt umber and I'm going to start base coating that background. I'm going to bring it down the side of the plant pot. Now, as I get these colors on here, the burnt umber and the white, I'm going to take my damp paper towel and I'm just going to lightly pat up and down. It's going to give it some texture. Now up in here, here we go, 
up where the flowers are going to be in here, I'm just going to lightly rub that paper towel in that area. Okay, so let's get some more white up here. A little bit of brown. And again, I'm going to just take that scrunched up paper towel and I'm going to pounce straight up and down. I want a little more brown right here. And again, just kind of pounce up and down. going to turn this a little. I'm going to grab some burnt umber and on one side of my brush I'm going to put that burnt umber side toward the plant pot and then I'm just going to brush out, take my paper towel, pounce over above the pot and down into that brown a little bit leaving it deep where it touches the pot. All right. into it a little bit. Okay, I like that a lot. So I'm going to turn this upside down to do the other side. I'm going to take my white and start spreading some white on the canvas. A little bit of burnt umber on the, the edge of my brush. And put it in near the plant pot. Take my paper towel. I'm actually going to hold the canvas down here so it won't make a lot of noise. And I'm pouncing with my damp paper towel just straight up and down. And I want to grab a little more brown, kind of swoosh it in. This is all done pretty quickly because we want to work it while it's wet. Again, take the paper towel, pounce straight up and down. Turn it around to different sides to give yourself some different um, patterns in the texture. This is a nice fast background. And we're going to finish by adding some more white up here. Some more burnt umber. And I'm going to go ahead and pounce up and down again with my paper towel. The harder you pounce, the more it just kind of spreads out one color on top of the other. I do want it a little bit darker up here. We're going to um, shade around the edges also after, and that's going to take care of a lot of that, um, the edges here. All right. Okay, let's turn that around and see how we like it. Okay, I like it a lot. I think I'm going to leave that just as is for now. Let that dry a little bit. I put my brush in the water. I do want to get some green in behind here. So what I'm going to do is take a little bit of that hooker's green and I'm going to just kind of pat some in. See how that looks. I want it in behind my flowers. So let's take that same paper towel, which has a little bit of burnt umber in it, and we're just going to pounce straight up and down. Now I'm definitely going to want that green to get a little bit darker. And I want to go up in here. going to blow dry this a little bit so that the green will stick. I need the back of it, the background of the green to be dry. Put my brush in the water. I'm going to take a little bit of the light olive green too, which is a little bit more opaque. Put 
some of that in there. Get a little bit more of the hooker's green. There, now that's starting to look more like I want it. Get a little more hookers and kind of mix it in. Whoops, I do that every time. There goes my canvas right into my paint. I always joke that that's one way to test out a color. All right. I'm trying to keep my painting in um, in a certain spot so you can see it all and I end up getting my canvas into my palette. And I don't like to edit out those little bloopers because I like you to see that um, we all have those kind of things that happen as we're painting and we just kind of have to go with it. Okay, I do want this to fade out as it goes into the background, so I'm just going to um, kind of tap a clean paper towel, the side of it that's clean, and just kind of soften it off onto that burnt umber. If it gets too dark, you can always take just a tiny bit of white, pounce it on your palette, and just come back in with a little bit of white. I think that's good. All right, we're going to let that dry. While that's drying, let's go ahead and paint the plant pot. So um, I'm going to start with the bottom of it. I'm going to start with my half inch brush and I'm going to use the um, crimson color. And I'm just going to paint down the side here. Okay, so here we go. All right, sorry about that. Now we could have drawn the heart, I'm going to have a heart on the plant pot, as you know. I could have drawn that first and gone around it, but I'd rather just have nice smooth strokes here for now. Alright, I'm going to leave that white showing there for now. And what I'm going to do is run the brush down on an angle, and then in the middle I'm going to go kind of straight. And then on the other side, I'm going to angle this way. Okay. Now, while that's wet, I'm going to grab some burnt umber. And I'm going to lay it in right here. Okay. And I'm just going to pull the brown down onto the red and just gently blend it down a little bit. Okay, so that's going to change the way our um, brush strokes go. So we're going to change them more to a horizontal and we're going to come back in and do another coat, okay? Because this way um, it's going to show some of our background. It's a little bit transparent. So we're going to leave that like that. And I'm going to leave that little bit of, um, tiny bit of white right there. won't hurt either. Okay, so the band sticks out a little bit further. The rim of a plant pot sticks out further, so we need that to be lighter. So what we're going to do, I'm going to turn it on its side to paint this part. Okay, and I'm going to put the orange at the bottom of the band. 
where it touches the plant pot. That is such a pretty color. So that's going to be our highlight. I'm going to wipe it on my towel, then I'm going to get the red. And I'm just going to lightly blend it. Now it's so transparent that I have to let it dry and then come in and do another coat. So I'm going to take the red. I'm going to paint it right up under the brown shading and I'm going to finish the top of the rim of the pot. Super cute. I love it already. Okay. Oops, a little bit of brown came up there. All right, so now I'm just going to blow dry this for a moment and then we can continue. Okay, let's get the bottom of the plant pot done. So we're going to go ahead and take some burnt umber again and lay it under the rim of the pot. And blend it down onto the red. We're going to take our chrome, um, not chrome red, our crimson. Blend it into your brown. We're going to put some burnt umber down the side in a little while so you don't have to worry about getting the crimson right to the edge. Okay. Make your brush strokes go whatever way you need to to get that smooth for yourself. Okay. So now we're going to turn it back upside down and take some more of the orange. Paint the bottom of the rim of that pot. We're going to come in with our red above it. And I'm going to go back over it and smooth it out as best I can. I squirted out way too much crimson. You might want to squirt out a little less and only squirt more out as you need it. Okay, so I like that a lot. We're going to let that dry. So while that's drying, I'm going to go ahead and do the edges of this canvas. And I'm going to take that same paper towel, it's moist, and I'm just going to take it and bunch it back up so it's, it's not perfect. I'm going to take a little bit of burnt umber and I'm going to start pouncing the edge. Now I think what I'll do is I'll put my, my index finger into it instead. And I'll get some burnt umber on my fingertip inside the towel and I'll start to pounce 
So the brown is pointed to the outside of the canvas and the clean part of the paper towel is toward the inside. So it gives it a nice soft blend. And go ahead and let your finger go over the edge because we're going to, um, I'm going to choose to paint my outside edge in burnt umber when the painting is done. do the whole outer edge. So again, just take your burnt umber, pounce it there, let it go around the edge a little bit. I'm going to go right across the bottom of the plant pot. And I'm going to get a cleaner spot now. Your hands will get very messy doing this. Um, I'm a messy painter anyway, so I don't mind one bit. If you're not wearing it, you're probably not doing it right. <laughs> okay, let's see. Get a little more there. So you see what that starts to do? If you look at this side, right in through here compared to this side, it looks nice and antiqued and just finished over there. Okay. I'm going to continue that all around. All right, turn it. I just keep turning it so I can come at it from the right toward the left. I'm right-handed, so it's easier for me to go this way. If you are left-hand dominant, you might want to come in from the other side. It's whatever feels the most comfortable for you and where you have the most control over the technique. I come in a little bit more on the corners and a little bit deeper. If you get too much paint on, you can just take your wet paper towel and go back over the area, but I really like this one the way it is right now. Okay. You can always come back and add more later also. Once it dries, the next layer will stick and be even darker. Okay, so I'm really liking that right now. So I'm going to just take a moment to blow dry that. All right, so far I'm loving it. I want to get some of that burnt umber down the sides of the plant pot and the rim. By making that darker, it's going to help make it look like it's curving around, okay? So I'm going to take some burnt umber, put it down each side. Just kind of softly blend it inward. And do the same thing on the other side. So I'm going to turn it upside down for that. I'm going to put my burnt umber here. I just put on a little bit at a time. I need a little bit of water and then I'm going to touch my brush to my paper towel and come back over my painting with just a little bit of water to soften that shading. Okay, now I'm going to do the same thing on the outside of the rim, but this time I'm just going to put the paint on the corner of the brush, okay? So I'm going to put it on the corner, rub it on my palette a little bit, touch it on my towel, and then right here I'm going to come up and put some of that burnt umber. 
Then I'm going to do the same thing on this side using the same corner of the brush. I'm going to come in, put my burnt umber there, come up the side, and just bring it on toward the center. Just going to blend toward the center. I'm going to wet my brush, touch it on my paper towel, and just continue to blend right there with just a little water. Now right in here, I see a couple little tiny spots. Let me see if I can zoom in on that for you. Okay, right in through here you can see um, some little spots of white. So I'm going to take a little burnt umber on the corner of a brush and I'm just going to go in and get some burnt umber in those little light areas. Okay. Okay. I really like it. Okay, I'm going to zoom back out for you. Okay. So now we have to decide where we want the mums. Okay, so I'm going to place them um, sort of unevenly in the plant pot. I did do a little bit of a rough sketch, so I'm going to take a peek at that. And I'm going to get my pencil. And basically, I'd like one in this area. I'm just going to draw some circles that you may or may not see very well. Uh, I'm going to put another one here that's going to come down onto the rim of the plant pot. I want a big one right up in the middle. And at least one more over here. And let's see. Do I want a little one there? I'm not sure yet. So we're going to hold off till I know, till I'm sure. Okay. So what I'm going to do is base coat those circles in a jagged, a jagged circle of gray. So I'm going to grab my um, half inch flat brush and I'm going to grab some titanium white and some Mars black and I'm going to make a gray and I'm just going to come in and just make kind of a fuzzy, fuzzy circle. This one's going to go over the rim. And this is calling to me to have a little one up in here. Okay, I think that's probably going to work for me. This is the exciting part. So I'm letting this develop while you watch. Okay. Alright, so while that's setting up, I'm going to rinse this brush out really well. And I have to make some leaves. So what I need to do is make some colors that I want for the leaf backgrounds. Now these are um, whimsical flowers. They, um, I have mums in mind, however, they're just going to be whimsy flowers. So I don't have to make the leaves look like any particular plant. So I'm going to take some of the hooker's green and a little bit of burnt umber. And let's see what happens to that green. Okay, it becomes more of a dark avocado color and I like it a lot. And so I'm going to just try to um, make some brush strokes. So I'm going to put my brush down and I'm going to spread around the top and bring it back down to the point. So I like that a lot. I'm going to go ahead and throw some of those in and I'm going to point them in different directions. I really love a little bit of burnt umber in with that green. 
and I'm going to turn this different ways. Okay, I might even um, stick some in the middle because the petals will cover that too. So let's go ahead and get some some leaves here and there. And I'm going to put some here, here, here. All right. Now, I want to hang some down off the side over here. Add a little bit of brown in with that green. And let's see. I might have to switch to a smaller brush also. Okay. I am liking that. Let's come in and put one here down on the plant pot. Now another thing that you can do is you can load your brush with your color. You, this is the green plus the brown. Now I'm going to take a little bit of that olive green on my brush also and um, make some with a little bit of that green on the tip of my brush. So when I come out, you're going to see a brighter green. Okay. And we'll come back in and play with that some more also. So I'm just going to come in and add a little bit more of that darker color. Love it. Now what you can do is take that brush that has the paint in it and just kind of um, lay some brush strokes in there and then as you come out just kind of let the paint run off the brush and just put a little bit of green out in your background like that. Keep it really light. Okay. And let some areas come out further than others. Don't leave this all perfect. Okay. All right. That's a great start. Okay, we're going to let that set up a little bit. While that's drying, I'm going to take my round brush and a little bit of that um, light olive green. I'm going to take a little bit of titanium white with the olive green. And I'm just going to come in and add that here and there on these leaves. Don't be afraid to just play. I always say when you're painting whimsy, um, anything goes. You don't have to worry about perfection. You can just play, see what happens, see what you like. Okay, so we can lighten one side of the leaf. Just adding a little bit of that. Now you notice a little goes a long way. I haven't reloaded the brush. I'm just kind of using what's in it. And I'm just making some, some little brush strokes. Okay. All right. Take just a tiny bit of white in this dirty brush and come back in. Now, here's something neat that you can do too. You can make a lighter color. You can take this number six brush, put the point towards your flower, lay it down, press and lift. Again, I'm going to take the same color, but I'm going to dip the point in the darker green, and I'm just going to lift, press, lift, Press, lift, press, lift. A little bit of dark green out here. And um, we can keep adding uh, leaves even after our flowers are done. Super fun. I like clusters of three, and I like one by itself every now and then. So I'm just grabbing a little bit of the darker green kind of having some fun throwing leaves in here and there. Okay, again that's Hooker's Green Hue Permanent. Okay, all right. I'm going to 
run the blow dryer over that just for a quick moment to make sure the flowers are dry. Okay, now with, um, with the flowers that I'm envisioning for this, they don't really have like a center. All the petals come to a center, but when you really just look at the flower, you don't really see it, if that makes any sense. So um, what I'm going to do is just imagine that it's over here on this one, maybe over here right around in the middle, maybe up toward the top on these. And we're just going to see how this comes together. I'm going to take my number six round and some titanium white. And I'm going to start on the outside of the petals and work my way in. But I'm going to keep in mind where I said the center is. So on this one, I put it right here. So as I pull these petals in, I want to pull them all toward that center. Okay, I'm going to start with the outer row. You know what, let's get this little one done first because I'm going to have the big one sit on top of the little one. So we're just going to go and pull, pull, okay, so the center is supposed to be up here, so I'm just going to start pulling some smaller ones toward the center, and we're just going to leave it like that. Now out in here, we're just going to come back, and we'll lay some more there. Okay, so we're going to do this one. Here's our center, so to speak. So we're going to stroke the petals as though they're growing in toward that center. This flower is on top of the other one. Pull everything toward the center. So this area is just going to have two rows and this side might have three rows of petals. So we're just going to come back in. Okay, you could leave a little more gray than that showing if you'd like to. We could also go in and tip in a little bit of yellow, but I'm trying to keep this fairly simple. Okay, we're going to let that dry. And we'll come over here and do this one, which, let me think. You know, the more I think about it, I think I want the center to be up in that area. So let me put a little white there just to kind of show you where it is. And we're going to put our brush outside the gray area and just pull, 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 pull. And all my brush strokes are heading toward this. I'm going to do another layer. But I'm going to let that one set up for a moment. I can turn it around and do the bottom of it. One, two, three, four. So you see what I'm doing? I'm extending the gray a little bit. And I'm actually going to let those set up before I continue. So I'm going to come and do this one. Isn't that fun? You can do some little rows too that have shorter petals like that. Come back here. Same here. 
there, we're going to pull these little petals in toward that center. Here as well. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, so let's flip this around. We're going to do the bottom layer of the petals. You can make some of these a little bit longer to change the shape of the flower a little bit. That white looks so nice against the orange. Okay. And come in here and hit some of that one a little bit more. Okay, I want to let that set up a little bit, so I'm going to actually take the blow dryer out again. So bear with me while I just give this a quick, just a quick dry. And I'm making some of these petals a little bit longer and a little bit bigger here and there. Okay, it adds a little more interest um, than having them all perfect as though they are hand painted for perfection. We want it to look like an actual plant pot, so it might have some petals a little longer. So let's get the blow dryer on that for a moment so those petals will be set up so we can continue. Alright, so I'm going to get that round brush and I'm going to continue. Oops, there was some water on the ferrule. That's one thing you have to be careful, for, uh, careful of with brushes when they're in the water um, and you touch your brush to paper towel. Sometimes you also have to touch this part, the ferrule, the metal part, onto the paper towel or water drips down, comes down your brush and onto your painting and makes a big puddle. So you see by going back into the ones that are dry with more white um, and leaving some darker ones underneath, we create depth and dimension. Okay, so let's complete this big one and then we'll go back and we'll We'll finish them and we'll keep adding more highlights. So for this one, I'm going to add another row and I'm going to leave a little bit of gray showing in between. And I'm okay with this smaller row being a little darker because it's underneath these petals. And so that gives us our depth. Okay, super cute. This one got a little big. Um, so I might make a couple others just a little bigger. All right, very good. Okay. I'm liking this quite a bit. Okay, so we're going to come in. Now, these particular flowers, like I said, aren't really going to have a major center but we can decide to put some color in there maybe just a tiny bit of yellow we'll see all right let's get some more in there and I want to fill in the bottom here okay This one needs some more petal direction here. So I take more paint on the brush and I don't press as hard on the brush to make some of the petals pop on top of the others. You just want to add some color and leave some of the darker colors showing. Okay.
And one thing about white, as it dries, it tends to kind of disappear into the other colors. So that's why we can come back in and we can keep adding some, some extra white there. Okay, I'm going to put a little bit in here. Oh my goodness, I'm really loving this. All right, so put some more here. Again, um, this flower is in front, so we're going to go ahead and leave this other one just a little bit darker down in here. And we're going to make this one have the big bright petal. Okay. So step back and kind of take a look at your masterpiece and see where you might want to come in and accentuate some over others. And I'll tell you what, there was a little bit of... Um, little bit of red in my white paint and that looks so pretty. I'm going to pick up the smallest bit of orange and I'm going to come in and add it on a couple of the tips. Just a tiny bit like that. I'm just going to come in and tint some of those tips with a tiny bit of it. Of course this is optional like anything else. Um, you can opt to just leave them bright white, or you can add a little color in. Now, just for the interest of painting, I think I'm going to add just a little tiny bit of color to where we would imagine the center would be. And it's going to be, let's do this, let's grab a little bit of this green, because mums actually have a little bit of a yellowish green look down in the middle. So let's just put in a little bit of that. And I really think I like it better without the, um, the orange in the petals. But it's up to you. You might want to add a lot of color. Um, so I'm just going to go over some of those. Now what I want to do is put some random petals out there. I like to do that in my flowers. So I'm just going to just put some loose petals out there. Um, they might just be falling off of the other flowers. Or maybe there's some stems in there. You can do whatever you'd like. I like to get it up and out away from the actual um, design and just kind of bring your eye out a little bit. So I would turn this different ways and I would just decide where I might like a few petals. And some are just going to be one little random petal just out there. Okay. Okay. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to add some stems and tendrils in the leaves. And um, I'm going to show you with this number six round, but I may also take out a liner brush. Um, so you can make darker, um, darker stems and tendrils out where the paint is lighter. And where, where it's dark, you might want to put lighter color and where it's lighter you might want to put darker color. So I'm going to take some water. I'm going to put it on my palette. I'm going to grab some of the um, Hooker's Green Hue Permanent and mix it in with my water. But I'm going to take a little burnt umber and mix it with that also because I just I love those colors together. It gives you a rich earthy green. I'm going to roll the brush and I'm going to get it up on the tip and I'm just going to use the tip of it and I'm going to come down and put some tendrils. Now, you know what? I don't care for that. So I'm going to show you when you do something and you don't really like it, as long as what's under it is dry, you just take some clean water and you basically get rid of it. So I'm going to switch to my liner brush. I have different ones. This is um, this is a very old one, but it's probably like a number two script liner. And I'm going to add water to my palette. I'm going to roll my brush into this nice, beautiful color. I'm going to get a little bit more paint. 
and I'm just going to come back in and create my tendrils or whatever I want in there. Okay, and I want to connect some of these little leaves. I'm going to do that by just putting my brush in them and then just connecting them. Sometimes I do leave random leaves in my paintings just out there without stems also. It depends on my mood and it depends on the design. But I'm going to connect these tonight. Awesome. All right, so you can see the difference this side with the stems versus the side without. And I'm just going to keep on going. I don't want the stems to go over the flowers. You could, I mean, it's your choice. But in this case, I want my flowers to stay nice and bright and I want them to be the center of attention. All right. Now, I don't want to do another tendril here just like that because I don't really like symmetry in a lot of my things. So I'm just going to um, pull out from here and kind of make one up there. You could have just some random um, little pieces just sticking out also. Okay. I don't want to overdo it on that. And let's see. Over here, I want to make some. I want to make a line that comes down on the plant pot, but um, I want it to show. So I'm going to rinse my brush. I'm going to use the light olive green, some water, and some titanium white, and I'm going to mix up a lighter green. And let's see what we think about bringing a piece down here okay and just just kind of out there maybe maybe it has a friend here so maybe it's just like a little little something sticking out there it's not just one random piece but a few pieces and then maybe we'll just add add a few of those brighter um, stems out in the bouquet I really like that a lot. Okay. And I'm going to add something here. Okay. And again, go with go with your gut of what you like. And um, a lot of my students, my in-person students, which I'm not doing anymore, but um they used to look at their paintings through the lens of their phone camera and um, it would show them things they would they would notice things they didn't notice with their naked eye so it's something um, something worth thinking about okay so this one is a little thick because I was just going to add some little leaves to it so let's go ahead and take that liner brush and do that we'll come in and we'll just put some little leaves there not sure I'm crazy about that um, let's see so that's good and seeing that I put it in let's just let's just go with it let's put another one here with some little little leaves like a little piece of grass or something in the bouquet and um, maybe something over here okay so let's take a step back and take a look at it now what I might want to do is just put a couple of little random leaves out beyond this greenery just to bring your eye out a little bit I think it'll be pleasing to the eye and make this look less manicured. So I'm going to take again the green 
the hookers with a little bit of burnt umber and make that luscious green that I like. Roll it on my brush. And out beyond the bouquet, I'm just going to put a few, few leaves. I like that. So I'm going to do it here and there. Maybe one. It might only be just one leaf. It might be a few. And I think having them a little bit outside the greenery just adds to the interest. So I'm going to do that here and there. How do you like that? Let's see. Let's put another one here. Maybe here. I like that a lot. You can look now and see the side here that I haven't added it to and see the side where I have and you can decide if it's something that you want to do or not on your masterpiece. Mix up a little bit more of that green. And I'm just going to go ahead and press and lift, press and lift, press and lift, and let's see. Sometimes I have to turn it back around to see what else I want to do, and then flip it back upside down again. Okay, and I just need a few more maybe down this left side. All right, kind of liking it the way it is. I don't think I want to do too much more to that. I'm going to splatter it. So here's the decision. What color do we want to splatter with? I think I'm going to use a tiny bit of white and if I don't like it I'm going to change my mind really really fast. Hmm, It's a toss-up between the white and the brown. Speaking of brown, I have a little bit of canvas showing right here, so I'm going to put some burnt umber in there. Just kind of rub it into the red. Now, I was going to paint a heart on the plant pot. That was my original vision, but I really like it the way it is. So I don't, I don't want to go in and mess with that too much. So the decision is to splatter or not to splatter and what color to use. I think I'm going to um, go on the safe side. I have to move something here. I'm going to be on the safe side here and I'm just going to use a little bit of burnt umber. So I didn't call out this brush at the beginning of the tutorial but I'm just going to use an older round brush. Let me find one here. There's a lot of different ways that you can splatter. I like to use a round brush. So I'm going to get a brush like this that's a little bit worn out, okay? And I'm going to wet the brush. And what I do is I put the water on my palette like this and I take some of my color and I mix it into that water Okay, and make more of like an ink or skim milk consistency. Consistency. Now, I always test it to see what size the dots are that are going to come off my brush. Um, if they're too big, you have too much water. And if they're too small, you need a little bit more water. So what I'm going to do is just come in, hold my brush, tap with two fingers, and I'm going to get some splatter there. Okay, I like it. I'm going to leave it out around the edge. I don't really want it all over my flowers. So you could let this dry and then cover your flowers with a paper or something. That's a little too much water. So I'm just going to grab a paper towel and blot that. So before you do this, you want the colors on the bottom to be dry so that if you get a splotch you don't like, you can clean it off without ruining what's below. 
Okay, but for the sake of the tutorial, I'm just going to go for it. All right, so right here, I got a splotch that's a little bit on the big side. I want to just dab it. And there's some on the flowers. I don't really mind a little bit, but I really did want to keep these flowers nice and bright. So I'm just going to eliminate them. Now, while that's drying, you'll notice that your white paint is soaking into the canvas. So um, I'm going to get a little bit more of the white paint. My titanium white. I have some in a bottle. And I'm just going to go back and um, kind of brighten up some of those petals as they dry. Some of the white just fades into the background. So let's get a little bit more. And this is where you can leave the lower ones a little darker. It's just going to help give you more dimension that way. So I'm going in and I'm just adding some more white on some of the petals. Especially the ones that I had a little bit of orange that I showed you. I'm not crazy about the orange. Okay, so I'm going to come in and just hit the petals that I want to accentuate. Okay, like in here, there's great opportunity here because there's a lot of darker petals. So I'm just going to brighten the, some of these up. Okay. All right, so you can see how the next layer is just going to brighten it up, but I do recommend leaving some of those darker petals. That's really what's giving you your dimension there. Okay, so for purposes of this tutorial, I'm going to call this one done. Now, um, when it's finished, I'm going to varnish it with some water-based varnish. As long as I have a brush in my hand, I'm just going to keep going. I'm going to varnish it. I like um, a gloss varnish. And then once it's dry and varnished, then I'm going to paint my edges burnt umber, which is going to help frame this painting. Um, you can always come back in and keep embellishing. And I always say that. It's hard to know when to stop or when you really want to stop. Like I could take my pencil right now and a little bit of this green and just come in and add some little green dots, which is going to end up creating a center. But I do like it, so I'm just going to put in a few. I called it done a minute ago, didn't I? But then I decided, oh, let's just keep playing. You didn't really want to shut this tutorial off anyway, did you? Okay. So, my green paint's a little bit thick. But I like that. It gives it a little interest and kind of brings uh, the color of the leaves in. Okay. All right, so I'm going to end that there. I hope you enjoyed this painting tutorial, and I'll see you soon.